Okay, in this video, I'm just going to go through about the different ways of controlling the gain structure, especially if it's something you haven't recorded. Um, that can be really difficult at times because uh, if you've controlled the levels, you know where you're at. Um, but if you're being sent something to mix, uh, then you don't necessarily have those controls. Uh, just as an example, I've got a track here and I've got the vocal. And if I was to look at it carefully, I could make it look like this and make it look really big. And it, I could be thinking, oh, that's we're going to have major problems. I, well, it could also be it looks like we've got no problems because that's how we view it. And that's we can adjust those just by clicking and dragging up. But you see it affects all the other regions and clips in Pro Tools as well. So I'm going to check this and I've turned this down so it's not too loud, but you can see uh, I've got the mixer set to K20. So there should be plenty of headroom and we're looking for the vocal to be sort of averaging around the zero mark here. Um, because obviously if we do it across everything, it should gradually build up until we get to the sub mix. So we hit play. Something about you makes me smile, sends me soaring every time. Something about you, something about you. So you can see that the level is consistently uh, over. I mean, the, the solid uh, color when we, I was playing that was the average. And then up here was the peak levels. So how can we adjust that? Well, there are a number of different ways. The first way is to use clip gain. Now, located at the bottom of every clip on the left-hand side, you'll see what looks to be like a little fader. And if I click and hold on that, you'll see I can bring that and I can just gradually decrease that. And if I take it down to, and if I hold the command button, I can then do it in increments. So point value increments. So if I take it down by four dB and just loop that same section again, Let's take a look at our mixer and just check out where that now sits. Something about you makes me smile, sends me soaring every time. Something about Okay, so the peaking is hitting about that minus 12, and it's more consistent. I could probably take it down just a touch more, actually, just to cut, make sure I've got total control where I want it. Because by having control of those levels, I have better control later on in terms of EQ, compression, and, and other things like that. So I'll just check that again. I can do it just to be able to look. Something about you makes me smile, sends me soaring. Something about there we go. So that's much better. I'm much more happy about that. There are other ways to do it as well. So there's the clip gain. Uh, and I can do it then on this one and bring that down by uh, four and a half. And you can see, actually, we can go down to it's nothing. And I can increase it by 36 dB. So likewise, if, if it's something's too quiet, you can boost the volume of that. What you have to be wary of, though, is obviously the background noise that comes with it. So I'm just going to take that down to four and a half as well. There is another way of doing it. So if I just uh, press the option key or the alt and just click on that, that resets it. And I can then go into Pro Tools and call up the in the mixer and call up the plugin. So I could even do it via the EQ. So any of this, this sort of stuff here, if I open this up, you'll see it's actually got an input. And actually, I've pre-done it already by four and a half so if I set that back to where it was you makes me smile sends me soaring something about you makes me smile sends me soaring so I can use the input on the EQ and gain stage it that way that's another way of doing it alternatively and then you can see very easily again holding the command button I'm able to do it in more precise increments so we've got the, and you could also then boost the output or reduce the output. So if you certainly more on um, effects or plugins that need um, that have analog characteristics, you can really play with the input and the output to drive it to gain coloration and then gain match on the output. So you don't clip the next plugin that you use. So you've got the EQ plugin there. If I bypass that and go into here and then go down to uh, Avid, if I go into this one, just scroll down past my list of stuff and you've got trim so I click on trim and then you've got the trim plug in here as well so you can either do it, look at it at plus 12 or plus six and again I can then reduce that so we're looking at four and a half again something about you makes me smile and managing your gain staging that's so it's using the trim plug in uh, that's also using the EQ. You've got an e input there, and you've also got the output. 
and going back to the audio if I just then click and you've got then the clip gain control the clip gain as well just to point out is non-destructive so what that means is you're not making permanent f changes to the audio file and it's also very useful to, in prepping for automation so it means that maybe the automation won't be have to have to be as great you then rely on less on compression as well so you can do certain things and get into editing sort of words or syllables if you want to go that far and clip gain those things as well so there we go gain structure using clip gain eq or trim